My name is Aaron Young, and you've probably clicked on this video because you want to see how to set up your demand gen campaigns the right way. And that's what I'm going to be taking you through in this video, the step-by-step -step process of setting up your demand gen campaigns. Now, if you miss any of these steps, I don't want you to worry because if you follow the link in the description below, you can get access to my demand gen setup guide, which includes screen shares so you can see every single step that you need to set up your demand gen campaign. Now, when it comes to demand gen, the one thing that I do need to stress is that this is what I would call a secondary or in many cases, a third level of a campaign. And what I mean by that is that in most cases, you would not start with a demand gen campaign. The reason for that is because demand gen is really good at outreaching and making people more aware about your businesses or services. So for brands that have a really high intent search, so what I mean by that is that they've got search traffic where people are looking to buy your product or book in your service straight away. You're gonna be much better starting with search and shopping campaigns, then adding in Performance Max and then adding in Demand Gen on top of that with you wanting to wait until you've made your campaign profitable first before you start looking at these types of campaigns. However, we are also seeing some success with Demand Gen for businesses that don't have that high keyword intent. And what I mean by that is that you've got a service or product that doesn't have a lot of search volume about it. So you're having to educate your potential users or your potential clients that one that you or your product even exists. So that's just one thing I want you to think about when it comes to using your demand gen campaigns. The reason why I mention that is because I do know that Google is really bullish with demand gen at the moment. It's their new product and they're trying to push a lot of businesses to use it. Most cases I'd be saying just wait, you should not be starting this campaign until you are really wanting to scale your account and you've already got really good profit levels in your other types of campaigns. So with all that said, let's jump into a screen share so I can take you through the step-by-step -step process of setting up your demand gen campaigns. Now, before you start a demand gen campaign, what I do want to really reinforce is that you need to have at least 100 users inside of an audience. And the reason for that is because you need these 100 to be able to create a seed list because what demand gen does is that it looks to create lookalike audiences from your current audiences. It's not targeting those people, it's using those people as a baseline to target new people. Now. 100 is the baseline, but I do recommend that the larger this list is, the better. But the way that you can check that is that if you go into Google Ads, go to Tools and then Audience Manager, you then want to go to your data segments and you can start to see the sizes of your audiences. Now, the other thing you do want to recommend is that you have specific video ads. So I wouldn't just be repurposing any content you've got. What I would really recommend is that you are recording different ads and you want to have these elements in it. So a strong hook, you want to be able to highlight a problem and you want to introduce your product as a solution build trust and authority, and then have some strong and clear call to actions. Remembering that you may be targeting people who have never heard of you before. So you just want to make sure that you're able to grab their attention and then really drive the results that you're looking for. The other thing that you need to make sure is that you've got your ads ready to go. And in this inside of this guide, you can also see the image specifics that you need or the image specs. And then once you've got that ready to go, you can head into Google ads. You want to click on create campaign, new campaign, and then you can either go for sales or leads. In this case, you can go for leads. You can also do, go for awareness and consideration, but we'll just go for leads for this one. And then it's a matter of if you want to remove any of these goals, you can by selecting that. Once again, it doesn't remove it from your account. It just means that when you move to any bidding strategies like maximize conversions or maximize conversion value, it doesn't take the conversions that have been removed into account. We're happy with both of those. We're going to click continue. Then we're going to select demand gen and then go through and click continue. Now, when it comes to the campaign name, I want to be able to have a campaign name that's easy for me to know what we're talking about. And for this one, we're going to be doing this for masterclass leads. So we're just going to shorten that down to MC leads. Now, the campaign campaign name is only internal, so no one else is going to see it, but it just lets you know what is worthwhile for you. What we're going to do here, we're just going to generate this for clicks. You can do conversions or clicks. The reason being is this is a newer brand, so we're just wanting to, we don't have lots of conversion data, so we just want to get some initial data out there. Then you can add in your budgets. Now, for your budgets, you've got two options. You can set a daily budget, or you can set a campaign total. Daily budget basically just runs like your other budgets, estimated amount per day. You can have it as unlimited, so it runs all the time, or for a specific period of time. Or you may want to go that we are just going to be running for a thousand dollar budget, and we want this to run for the next month, or you could do two months, or you could select your own option from there. Now you may see a warning here: Google is wanting you to spend more money, so I'm usually just ignore that one from there. Some of the things you do need to be thinking about is your location and your devices. So what I'd be looking at in through 
hear us firstly is I generally like to enable campaign level location and language targeting. Now, Google will recommend that you can do this at the ad group level. You can also do it at the ad group level. But for us, because we only want this to go to certain locations, so let's just say for this one, we only want the ads to go to Australia, United States, and United Kingdom. Once again, I'm just using this as an example. We're just going to keep it set up like that. When it comes to devices, the only thing I do recommend for you to look at is if you've got an ad which is driving people to certain websites, I would generally turn off TVs. The reason for that is because if we're wanting them to go off-site, our TV generally isn't a good place for that to occur, just thinking about the usability of it. If it's just general awareness, TV is going to be fine. So just think about those options from there. And then when you're happy with all of that, you can go through and create your first ad group. I've just put in an ad group, so it's masterclass. Now you can go through and add in your audiences. Once again, if you've got some previous demand gen campaigns, you can see your audiences in here. We're going to create a new audience just so I can show you through the process of this. And what you can do through here is that you can either add in some other custom segments or you can create a new one. And what you're doing in through here is you're going through and you can add in any targeting around people who have searched certain types of keywords or if they've gone to certain types of websites or if they have any types of interests. So you can just go through and start adding those lists in. You can then also add in your own data. And then from there, you can create a lookalike segment. Now, the way that this works is this is what the seed list was about. And remember how you said you need to have at least 100 on the list. So we've got this in through here. You can see this one has 420 people in it, which is enough because we need 100. And then you can choose how far out from that you want Google to go. So it's, whether it's narrow, balanced or broad, broad being it's less loose with looking at the data from these 420 pixels. That's how you can go through and add in this audience in there. I'm just going to select this one because we've already got set up, but I've shown you the process of how we go through and set that up. And then we need to go through and create our new ad. Now there's three different types of ads you can create, a single image ad, a video ad, or a carousel image ad. So let's just say we're going to set this one up as a video and we're going to call this angle one. You do need to add in your URL that you're wanting people to go to. And we've added that in through there. And then this is where you can set some different videos. So we've already got some videos added in through here. And then from there, you just need to start adding in some different headlines. The other thing that you can do is you can also add in some different site links. If you want them to go to different parts of your website, we're going to add in two through there. And you can also add in your display URLs. Now, there's two options you've got here. As you can see from here is that we did have the options to add in more than one video. But what I like to do if you really want to do some good split testing is I would actually go through and add this as a secondary ad. So we'd create a new ad with a different video and then we can do a really good split test on them. But you can also do that after the campaign has been set up. And once you've got all of the areas added, we've just got to add a logo in here. You can then go through to your review. And then when it's all ready to go, you can go through and publish your campaign. And that's how you set up your demand gen campaigns. So that's the last setup guide that I'm gonna be taking you through in this series. And now we're gonna change gears in the follow-up videos for my Get Google Ready playlist, where I'm gonna be taking you through how to optimize all of these different types of campaigns. And if you wanna make sure that you don't miss out when those videos are released, make sure that you don't only really subscribe, but you turn on that notification bell so that you know when those videos become public. And if you wanna watch all of the videos that are available in this playlist so far, go through and watch this playlist right here. See you next time.